stability bunkers are a great way of adding offline raid protection, in particular to smaller bases. However, many of the designs derived from this popular stem have one major weakness. The foundations of the bunkers are exposed. Dedicated raiders can use jackhammers to exploit that weakness and gain access to the bunker without spending explosives. My plan was to make a simple bunker base for wipe day, which would not suffer from that weakness. I tried different versions of the original bunker, where all foundations are covered. But none of the designs convinced me. Then I remembered an exploit that is almost as old as my channel. Back in March 2018, I introduced the concept of placing a roof onto a twig foundation to seal an entrance. In that video, I used it to seal the entrance of a 2x2. The twig foundation used to be susceptible to splash damage from fire arrows, incendiary rockets and explosive ammo. It's funny to think that in 2018, we already knew about Explo ammo countering this type of bunker, but it took until 2020 before my gaming experience used the same approach to break the standard bunker design. But thanks to the tireless effort of Alistair and the Face Punch crew, the splash damage system was reworked and bunkers with twig seals are more viable than ever. Thus, I rebuilt that 2018 roof stability bunker design and together with Rusteady tried to break it. Nothing seems to affect the twig. We tested explosive ammo, incendiary rockets, flame arrows, the bunker survived them all. A modern version of my 2080 bunker 2x2 is exactly what I was looking for. It starts out as a simple, small 2x2 base, which can be thrown down without requiring any blueprint. You can easily turn this into a main base that protects the tool cupboard from 23 to 27 rockets. It just needs to protect the top of the main loot room from 8 to 12 rockets. Cost and upkeep are manageable even for solo players. If you decide to build roof access, a simple shooting floor can be added at any time. Of course this will increase the upkeep. Before we jump into the build, in this video I will try a more comprehensive style of guiding you through the build. I will not show you how to place all items in detail. The goal is to save your time watching and my time recording. On to the build. The build starts out with a 2x2 footprint. The first square will be the main loot room containing the TC. The second square can be used for sleeping bags, furnaces and a workbench. The third square can be used for more storage or utility items. Thanks to the single door, you have a functioning door block airlock. This is your starter unit. Next, we will create the possibility to seal the base with the roof stability seal. Ahead of the door, add a raised triangle foundation. Add half walls and a floor tile on top to protect its weak side from cheap tool raids. On the other side, build a foundation surrounded with walls and a half height floor tile. Have the hard side of this wall facing you, again to prevent cheap tool raids. Use stairs to get onto the second floor and place a roof exit around the opening. The starter unit is now ready and can be sealed when you go offline. In contrast to the standard stability bunker, which you seal from the outside, this bunker is sealed from the inside of the base, which is usually where you want to be when you log off. To seal the bunker, destroy the stairs. Onto the twig foundation, place a roof piece and upgrade it. For as long as the base does not have honeycomb, upgrade the floor tile to wood. This seals the entrance to the base. At this point, the base is tool and flame raid proof and a tan satchel raid, even without investing a single metal fragment. This is excellent for early wipe. When you come back online, destroy the foundation and the roof seal collapses. Replace the foundation and the stairs and you're back in the game. To make the bunker more effective, add honeycomb around the base. 
as soon as you get garage doors, replace all double doors. Once you get more metal fragments and high quality metal, start upgrading the base. Those triangles and the ceiling are the building blocks you should upgrade to armored first. The rest of the core can remain sheet metal for now. Use shotgun traps to guard the drop down. They may save the day if you get door camped. To appear less rich, I recommend covering up the exposed armored foundations. Here we use a roof ramp to cover the side of that raised foundation. The roof ramp will be your way in and out of the base for now. Eventually you want the inner 2x1 to be upgraded to armored. Next, let's work on the shooting floor. In front of the roof ramp place doors as shown. Surround the second floor with walls. Close off the ceiling. If later you want roof access, place a floor frame above the main loot room. Use the space as you like. If you're happy with the base this size, just close off the inner 2x2 with walls as well and call it a day. If you foresee that you will get the reinforced glass blueprint, my suggestion would be to turn the outer space of the second floor into a usable honeycomb. To that end, upgrade the triangle floor tiles above the honeycomb to sheet metal. Close off these two triangles. If you plan to have roof access, place two half walls here. Turn those two triangles into loot rooms with four boxes. Place a locker inside of the remaining triangle. The square in front of it can become a bedroom. For the roof access, place a floor tile at half height here. Above it, create a roof access with a half height floor tile as well. Guard the roof exit with shotgun traps here, as well as below that floor tile. Add another 1x1 one one with a garage door to the top to push the cost of raids via the roof to 24 rockets. If you want to build a shooting floor, extend the roof exit into a 2x2. Two two. Distribute beds, sleeping bags and lockers for quick response. I would recommend having two exits to make it harder to keep you locked inside of the base. To make the base even stronger, let's make a few more upgrades. Should you obtain the blueprint, consider adding a ladder hatch above the main bunker entrance. And upgrade the outer walls to push the minimum rate cost to 22 rockets. To make brute force raids more costly, add another layer of honeycomb around the first floor. If you choose to do this, those exposed triangles next to the roof ramps can be ideal spots for external auto turret pods. For the shooting floor, we use the most basic design with triangles to create outer peak downs. Those single doors cover the gaps. I'd use a mix of embrasures with boxes and reinforced glass for the windows. If you have the right weapon and good aim, this shooting floor even allows to take heli. I hope you enjoyed this guide on turning a 2x2 starter into a sturdy little bunker main base. Let me know how this more comprehensive style works for you. Take care, Evil Wurst, out.